I told you guys about Enshrouded a little while ago and I was pretty impressed with what was on offer in their first gameplay trailer. This was a game made by the creators of Portal Knights. But my gosh, today they've revealed a gameplay trailer and it's astounding how much they've got already in the game. Honestly, I'm not over dramatic or trying to overhype this on purpose. It really does look like it could be the survival game of the year. So let's go into the combat trailer for this upcoming multiplayer co-op survival game. So out of the blue, a four minute combat trailer showcased a whole bunch of stuff, including a variety of creatures, which I'm gonna go down into detail with, combat systems, how you can change and mix up your attacks, go stealthy, go indirect, using different types of magic weapons and more. So let's react and watch it and then we'll slow dive into some of these features. But obviously they have got a detailed combat and stamina system. Run out of stamina and you won't necessarily be able to block. Every time you get hit and you're blocking, you're reducing some of that stamina pool. You can parry and when you do, you get the option to go ahead and then hopefully do a finishing move on your enemies. There really aren't that many survival games offering this good amount of combat. The closest we could probably think of is something like Conan Exiles. As we know, that's pretty janky. If up close and personal is not your bag, then using your bow is obviously going to be what you might want to go for with a variety of different ammo types that can cause mayhem and carnage. They show off more of the magic in the two choices, ones that will do short range quick attacks and staffs that will do maybe heavier but maybe slower damage. They also talk about having more axes and hammers as your melee weapons if that's the route you want to go or explosives and this is the really exciting thing look at the terrain damage it's doing this is a voxel based game you can use the environment to get around and take on your foes in different ways i show off a bit more of the cooking as well it looks fairly simple put three items in and then you can craft various different foods well that does take a while we can see they're quite a length of time to craft a the food there so you're gonna to have to think about things and prepare accordingly does look like they're also going to be doing more in-depth videos on all of these aspects in the future too. They also briefly show off some of the factions, including the Fell, Scavengers, Wildlife and Wild Beasts. With the trailer, I'm keen to point out that you can take on these enemies and factions in multiple different ways spread out across the world. And this is where things get really, really good and unique being able to stealth go up to enemies and take them down. Now, we've had stealth and crouching in plenty of other survival games, but nothing really effective has taken them usually down in one hit. The maneuverability of using a grappling hook there to get yourself from A to B is so, so cool. Or go ahead and dig your way through the mountain to take on an enemy's fault. Truly, what survival or even RPG game lately has got this big choice and selection of taking on enemies in different ways and so many ways to get across the landscape and maneuver. Look at this glider suit. It looks absolutely amazing. Pretty fast moving as well. They go into detail about the leveling up that you'll be doing. So obviously a bog standard experience system where then you'll have lots of perks that you can go ahead and choose from. And then Switch Note showing more of the diversity in the enemies that you'll be encountering. What I really like is that the abilities and skills you'll be unlocking are, have got actual proper attributes. So you'll be able to unlock like double jump, either blink, teleport and stuff like that. They're the kind of things that I really, really want to see more in survival games. Rather than just arbitrary stat increases, actual things that can change your character and how they move and how they progress. That skill tree does look still massively overwhelming, but I think people will probably enjoy building out their perfectly stacked character. Obviously, with weapons, you can go ahead and craft and make any at an armory or a forge, but legendary weapons you can only find out in the world, although you will be able to go ahead and upgrade them and add new abilities, which stops, obviously, the problem of finding something too early and it maybe not being the power level you'll need later. The blog finishes off with reminding people it's a 16 player co-op action survival game so you can help out your friends you will be able to maybe be have dedicated servers but if you want to play solo then you can do that also and again just the variety in this enemy here this big boss it looks really really good the only thing i would say is that some of the jitters around the character as it moved seem to be quite a lot but obviously it's still very much an alpha work in progress although it's meant to be releasing later on this year so far, it looks so polished in every other aspect. So let's analyse some parts of that trailer a bit more in depth. And obviously you can see there is going to be some sort of comfort or cosy system in the game. You see the comfort, warmth and then shelter there with a tick. Given the amount of detail with food, this does look like it's going to be a proper survival game, not just a very light or RPG-like game. 
Looks like enemies will scale alongside you and your friends if you're playing together as well. Because you can see this one's got a six. And then I do believe later on we see much more enemies with my higher numbers. The finisher here does a huge amount of actual damage. You can see it takes away about half of the enemy's actual health, maybe more. So it really will be beneficial in getting skills that can either increase that or making sure you've got enough stamina so that you can always have the chance to hopefully perfect parry. And it looks like they reliably get stunned a lot of the enemies when you do that perfect parry to finish off this finisher. Whereas in other games sometimes you stun them but it's not always guaranteed. And maybe every enemy is going to be lootable for goods and items. As you might expect, and it's common nowadays, but enemies are obviously weaker at different body parts, maybe not always the head for certain creatures, but in this instance, taking on a couple of these guys, I guess these are the scavengers, you see when you line up a perfect headshot, then it does do a lot more weak damage, you can see it pop up above the bar there, and there he's got a selection of either scrap arrows or exploding arrows, as you are pushed back by some of the bombs being thrown. I would have assumed that ones would be pretty similar to staffs in using mana, but by looks of things, no. In fact, they explicitly state that they use elemental damage types where the actual staff itself will use definitely the mana. That's the bar in the top left going down there when you're using the staff, but not the ones. Maybe they just don't use it a lot, and so obviously only firing off two shots here, it's hard to really discern if it does go down massively. But you can see the huge chunk it does take when using the staff. I love the power though, the way it's flickering between enemies. Definitely going to be doing my best for slash Gandalf impression with this one. And as you might expect, the more that you do, I'm guessing, the more you're going to be able to increase your abilities for a bigger mana pool to use. Also noticing that there are accessories as well with a ring here in the hot bar. So I'm guessing that was going to amplify and give you more buffs. The shape and scale of some of these creatures, I assumed that some of them would be bosses. But this guy is still getting decimated with only a few hits here with this powerful legendary weapon. So maybe it is a boss or maybe it's just a mini boss. But yeah, doing a huge amount of damage there with that melee weapon. And the idea that we're going to be terraforming by throwing our bombs, destroying these enemies. And then also having to be careful about what the damage they're doing to us in case it sends us into a pit. That's pretty unique. Although I do notice actually the enemies' bombs don't make a dent in the ground, only our bombs that we threw. So every game seemingly got to have cozy in it nowadays, but the intention to actually cook it and get in bust from that is equally as important by looks of things. Taking a look at this vegetable puree here, you can see it's made out of forest beets, water and salt. It does look like it will store all your recipes in the box above as well. So that's good to know. Maybe it's going to be more complicated with certain recipes than others. And it will actually tell you in real world time how long it's going to take for it to cook and make. So five minutes there for this one recipe. Note also the different shield designs in the backpack. So there is going to be quite a limited inventory space, I'm guessing. It doesn't look like it's that big, but hopefully there might be ways to increase that. Well, it does look like you've got two active hotbars that you'll be able to switch between and use in different tool sets and gear sets. Then a variety of little bits here. Experience scrolls, obviously gain experience, but more importantly, there is going to be different rarities. Not just legendary weapons, but it looks like it's going to be more common goods and the uncommon stuff. With these scrolls, we also get to see about all the different types of damage you'll be doing. Cutting, piercing, blunt, poison, fire, ice, shroud, and shock. Now this one is interesting because it says here that when you use it, you'll bring down meteors. Okay, box standard. But it will drain your remaining time in the shroud upon usage. It does look like we will be going to these other realms where maybe these enemies are spawning from to fight them on their own turns, possibly. This Vuka scroll here gives you a boost to your stamina and strength for the cost of 5 mana compared to 80 mana for that meteor one. Then we've got a fire wisp, not just simply a light to guide you through dark places, but it does look like it will do damage to enemies, I'm guessing with fire damage around you. Then this next couple of items give us more time in the shroud. An extra minute here by using the play, uh, Prayer of the Flame Scrolls to extra percent, 20 percent magic damage. So these are like what one time buffs because it lasts eight minutes 43 when you've used it to get that extra magic damage. Then we get another survival potion which gives us four minutes extra in the shroud, as well as obviously some tomatoes and food that give you the bog standard stuff. So maybe not just a food system just to keep yourself alive, but more of a buff system like Valheim to keep you going so you don't have to constantly eat in 20,000 steaks every day. I'm really, really impressed by the graphics and the locations and just the design as well. I, the first trailer had me thinking, oh yeah, obviously it's not kiddified like their previous game Portal Knights, 
But I was comparing it a bit to Fortnite. But actually, I think it's much more mature than that. There's definitely a bit more of a, I would say, a harder edge to a lot of these characters. Even if some of them do have some ex exaggerated body parts and stuff. I mean, I quite like cartoony graphics anyway. But it can put off a lot of people sometimes. It's a big complaint about Grounded. That's too cartoony for even survival hardcore fans. So this definitely is looking to be a bit more on the realistic side than I first thought. It's got a great fantasy landscape, great unique points of interest here that look really different from some of the others. Like this one wrapped in the mist and the brambles or dead trees. Honestly, they look absolutely fantastic. And then from that sort of swampy dead tree biome to maybe more forest and sunlit areas. And then in the background, you've still got that mist there as well. So it's interesting. And then, yeah, creeping up on enemies and being able to take them down with very quick stealth moves no matter how, maybe how much health they've got i like the idea of this one maybe against much bigger enemies it won't be necessarily something you can do but considering some of the hits we were doing earlier we're only doing about 100 damage 1570 that's going to take down a lot of enemies and a very fast and nimble grappling hook system as well to get you from a to b although it did look like that was just a particular point a metal point so you might not be able to grapple like that everywhere but even the climbing up certain structures there looks really cool. So that'd be interesting to be able to take out Fort's stealth style Assassin's Creed vibes going on. And sometimes you just got to go around digging a big old hole. You can see they're gathering loads of stone as you dig your way through and take out an enemy really silently. Or even through a building, which I really love as well. Like it makes so much sense. You could actually just break down through a wall or a ceiling and go and take an enemy out. And then obviously, yeah, it's impressive seeing the wing glider suit being used. Like I said, even if it is a little bit jittery, you can see the stamina usage. So it's not going to last forever, only until that actually goes down. But being able to jump into the fray if you really want, no mucking around with stealth. Just get in there straight away. Looks really cool. We see stun arrows and poison arrows being shown off on that one too. So then we got the stats bars in inventory. So we've got physical resistance and magical resistance both up pretty high there. So that might be something you need to think about. Level six here with all attributes. State is normal underneath. So I'm guessing that might be some debuffs that hit you. Then the comfort level as well. And obviously on the left hand side, you've got your weapon slot, your shield slot, a backpack extension. So that's good to see, as I mentioned earlier, that you'll be able to increase it. And you see the grappling hook and obviously the wing glider as well. So they're two things you're not going to have currently equipped straight away. You are going to have to get them or find them or maybe you have better ones eventually as well. And two slots for jewellery, two ring slots, not necklaces, just rings. And a typical armor slots, head, chest, arms, legs and feet. Then we've got the attribute screen. So again, got the character level on the top left, your experience points below, your flame level. The blessings of the flame boost your primary attributes by whatever amount it is. In this case, it's only zero at the moment. And then there's a lot going on here with all these stats. Your constitution, your spirit, endurance, strength, dexterity, intelligence, definitely taking a leaf out of more advanced RPGs or Souls-like games. And then that shroud level, like you've got passage level of one, so that means you've got 10 minutes in the shroud. So maybe it's like a gauntlet area where you go through, take on harder enemies, but you may get more rewards. And then, yeah, just a variety of other stats that obviously you might want to be increasing depending on what kind of build you're going for. And then more taking on of weird, wonderful creatures. This guy here just throwing all sorts of purple gunk at you. I like the fact at the very end also we see an enemy fire something on you and it actually blocks your view or goes on top of your head. And then we do see the stats or the perks again. It does look quite overwhelming. There is a huge amount going on here. But you can see as you're going in one direction or another, it is kind of making it more highlighted that that's a mage style build or ranger style build or warrior style build. So that's really cool. And yeah, I love that games are adding more of this. Give me actual physical attributes and perks and buffs rather than just bog standard attributes that are only going to increase my damage. We've seemingly a good mix of active and passive bonuses and buffs. And we're moving on to crafting, and obviously this can be done at a blacksmith or a forge. And yeah, it looks pretty complex in terms of what you'll be able to actually make and get. So it looks like tools will be able to be used as just bog standard weapons, not only for cutting wood. Nice and simple as well, only three ingredients needed, string, copper bar and wood logs. You obviously get a good sense of exactly what it is going to do in terms of damage, as well as some of the other stats. And then we've got three main tiers, copper, iron and bronze that you can see in the top left. And then weapons, there's a whole variety of different maces, spike clubs, machetes. And then in the armour, they have differentiated it under different headings. Mercenary, guardian, soldier, warden, tank, adventurer. I'm pretty sure that's how Portal Knights was back in the day. I've not played that one in ages. 
And then the legendary weapons that we'll be finding out and about in the world. You can see you've got durability, stamina and parry. So we are going to have to maybe repair our weapons. And it looks like each perk doubles up the initial damage from one to the next here. We're getting 16 extra fire damage with this deceiving staff. But after that, the perks change and it becomes about increasing critical hit chance instead. So you can't choose maybe the stat boost that you'll get. It does look like it does follow a path downwards. So after that increase in magical damage, it then reverts to 5% increase in critical hit. Some of the names sound pretty cool though. Minor Arcana, Inflamed Bow, Shroud, Corrupted Hammer, Lightforged Axe, and yeah, the Deceiving Staff. And then, yep, yeah, it finishes off reiterating that it's going to be a 16-player co-op game. I do wonder, like, 16 players is a lot. They're, that's approaching the kind of level you would see on a normal server-based game. You know, Conan Exiles is 40. You've got other games that maybe you only ever do 10, but 16 seems a much bigger number. But nevertheless, going around with your crew, making a big, big play about your character being the archer, the magician, or the rogue, then that sounds really, really cool. Let's hope the difficulty does really obviously spike up massively and there is a challenge and a reason to really have 16 players running around together. It is a PvE experience, but maybe if you've got your own dedicated servers, they're thinking of adding options for PvP down the line. So that's pretty much it. A deeper dive into the latest gameplay trailer for Enshrouded, looking absolutely phenomenal. I mean it, I see so many games and I've been excited for other things like Nightingale and Return to Modia. But out of coming out of nowhere with no real sign they were making this other than we knew they were doing something, King Games seemed to have something pretty polished, pretty involved and quite exciting, mixing the best of RPG with survival mechanics and hopefully creating a world that I want to spend a lot of time with. So as soon as we get any more news about Enshrouded, it's going to be number one on my list to deliver to you guys. So make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you right back for more survival news soon.